If you are an organizer and you want to have a global footprint, rather than having to create, you know, 50 or 100 different locations, you can have a global footprint with an online event. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. So let's start by sharing a little bit of your journey to Meetup. Yeah, okay. So first of all, we always say we use technology to get people off of technology. And if there's no better use of technology than to actually get people off of technology, I don't know what there is. And, and the reality is, is it's so important, as you know, not just from an entrepreneurship um, and from a kind of building business and networking perspective, but just from even a human perspective, the loneliness epidemic that exists out there in the world is just kind of terrifying. You know, 46% of people who are in a survey before the pandemic said that they regularly feel lonely, 46%. And 25% of people, one in four people, don't have one trusted confidant. And it's among Gen Zers, by the way, it's like 66% of people regularly feel lonely. College students during the pandemic, it's just, it's terrifying. So from a business perspective, it's awesome, obviously, as you both know and have experienced, and also just from a personal perspective. Okay, to answer your question uh, on my story, so, uh, I was a early employee at DoubleClick, so I got started in uh, the internet days at like 23, 24 years old. And the reason why that's kind of relevant is because from it, you might appreciate this in terms of thinking about relationships. The person who hired me at DoubleClick was a, uh, a leader named Kevin Ryan, who was the founder of MongoDB, Gilt, Business Insider, Zola, and like 15 other companies. Yeah. And he is the person that 20 plus years later, I got to acquire Meetup out of WeWork. That's a big fast forward. And we kept in touch throughout and he was my mentor throughout. So um, relationships matter, to put it lightly. To give you fill in that gap a little bit, uh, after DoubleClick, uh, I went to business school. I worked for a bunch of uh, publishers, uh, 100 Flowers and Everyday Health. And then I became the president of Seeking Alpha. Uh, after that, the um, the CEO of Investopedia, and I love I love finance because I believed that people make poor financial decisions, and that the mission of helping to educate people around finance meant a lot. At at at, at, a, at one at one point, the largest investor in Seeking Alpha came over to me, uh, and his name is Michael Eisenberg. And he runs a big, big fund. He was an investor in CM and he was on the board of WeWork. And he said, David, what do you think of Meetup? And I said, like, Meetup has changed so I, I go to Meetup events all the time. I go there for networking purposes, go there and meet amazing people. Like, Meetup has changed like millions of people's lives. I, I love Meetup. Like, I'm obsessed with Meetup. I'm obsessed with like interpersonal connections and helping people to lead more meaningful lives. You lead more meaningful lives by getting together in person with people, right? So he said, okay, that's good because we want you to become the next CEO. But I'm like, well, they already have a CEO. Their founder, Scott Heiferman, he's been the CEO and founder for like 17 years. They're like, yeah, well, so, um, so after WeWork acquired Meetup, they, there was a decision uh, to look for a new CEO and 27 interviews later, I was hired. <laughs> so I've been with the company for two and a half years, the only the second CEO in, in, in Meetup's history. Best job I've ever had by far, pr predominantly because I really feel like um, I make a, a major difference in, in, in people's lives and make the world a better place. And, and that's you know super important to me. Johnny and I can attest to that. And many of our clients who've moved towns or starting over socially, we've highly recommended because let's be honest, if there's a shared interest or a shared reason that you're in the room, connection magically happens a lot easier. So if you're struggling a bit with social anxiety, you're new to a town or an industry and you're starting over, it's a great opportunity to get like-minded people in a room together who are open to connection versus trolling random events or bars or 
opportunities where we're not gathering for those specific reasons. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Now, of course, you have been CEO and leader of Meetup through a pandemic where meeting up in person <laughs> is not really possible. And of course, with a goal of using technology to get people off of technology, I doubt Meetup went in thinking that virtual events would be an opportunity for you to explore with its core ethos being bringing people together. So let's talk a little bit about what's changed about Meetup through this pandemic experience that none of us had really planned for. Yeah, so there's a saying, never fail to take advantage of you know, a potential crisis or a challenge. And, and there were so many opportunities that in, in certain ways have truly helped Meetup to provide a better experience for its members and organizers that we were too scared to do in the past. So very specifically, the number one reason why we refused to bring on organizers in the past was because they said, we want to create virtual meetup events. And we said, well, we're an IRL only platform. And we turned down, no joke, tens of thousands of organizers because they wanted to create events that were virtual in nature with Zoom or whatever the Skype before that, or, you know, and have people all around the world. And we said, no, 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 we don't do that. Well, in late February, we started seeing China you know, the, the events and the RSVPs in China, like, go off a cliff. Like, I'm not talking about like 30 or 40%, I'm talking about like 90% down. And suddenly like Italy, 90% down. And we're like, oh, that's never gonna happen in the US. Like, it's gonna be like, you know, swine flu or SARS, which is horrible, horrible, devastating, but didn't really impact the US in any meaningful way. Obviously we're wrong. As soon as it be, we were, we were um, one of our employees was the first case of, of, um, of COVID um, in Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. And we actually, you know, ironically, Meetup was one of the first companies to have to leave their, their, their office space in a WeWork, no less, <laughs> on like March 2nd or March 3rd, super early. And we're like, okay, what do we do? So we gathered everyone together and we said, change of policy. <laughs> now, we, now, you know, safety is the most important thing. We, not, we need to make sure people are safe and and we opened up the ability for online events. We created the ability for people to use uh, 200 different event platforms. Zoom obviously being the most well known, but there's lots of different ones out there. And in the last uh, year and a half, since the pandemic started, we have had over 3 million online events uh, and now we're seeing, you know, due to the vaccines, things growing again. And just to, just to, I lead a podcast and I hate when people wax on for too long, but this, this will be quick. So, so just to share this one last tidbit, which is online events provide so much value for both members and organizers. And let me explain. If you live in a rural town and you, let's say, are the parent of ADHD kids and there's no meetup group for parents of ADHD kids in this rural town in Canada, like a friend of mine, so now he's able to be part of a Parents of ADHD online group that has people from 30 or 40 different countries, which is a real value for a member. If, if you um, are an organizer and you want to have a global footprint, rather than having to create you know, 50 or 100 different locations, you can have a global footprint with an online event. Ultimately, it never can replace in person and hybrid events is what's going to be something that becomes extremely popular in the future of both in person and online. And we're facilitating that, but there's so much value to be gained for members and organizers through going um, online. Uh, it's really been a blessing. It's really been a blessing. So what do you see as some of the biggest challenges as we move forward and your company goes back to IRL events after the entire world has been conditioned to pull everything back and, and has gotten incredibly comfortable sitting at home and doing everything as we are doing it right now. And I belong to some groups and there is a focus 
on, hey, this has been great, but things are opening up. And unless we can transition this in real life, then our mission, our purpose, and everything is going to collapse in on itself because all of those things solidify with face-to-face, person-to-person interaction. Yeah, I think, Johnny, you have the tale of two worlds. You have the introvert world and you have the extrovert world, right? On the extrovert world, if there's like if there's like a group of salespeople or marketers that 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 they're dying to get back out and they're 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 just out there and the vaccines are happening and they're going IRL and we're gonna we're seeing like groups that are filled with more extra like whether it's hiking groups or certain sports groups, um, we're seeing enormous growth like people playing pickleball, whatever, tennis, all these different groups, we're seeing enormous growth in groups that have personalities that are more extroversion oriented. Now, the opposite, groups that are more correlated with introversion, not to stereotype, but let's just say many of our tech groups out there or some of our potential (laughs) social groups out there, especially around uh, uh, introverts, um, they definitively do need um, more coaxing. Mm -hmm. and nudging and encouraging. So at at one point in time, we were um, create, we created something called Meetup Live to help organizers be more successful at the transition from in-person to online. Now we're actually doing the opposite and we're creating kind of workshops for organizers who have been doing Mm -hmm. online for so long, have had to kind of plan and how to manage getting back in person and to understand that in the beginning, there's gonna be some people that are being less comfortable getting together back in person. And that's okay. You don't need to wait until everyone is comfortable getting back in person. You need to wait till enough people are comfortable getting back in person that it'll start becoming a regular flow. And just the answer is Nike, just do it. 